Hey everyone, thanks for, thanks for coming by. Um, my name is Shin Horiuchi, I'm with Trilio Data. Um, we are backup recover managed for OpenStack. Um, and what I'd like to do is kind of go over who we are, what we do, and then go over uh, a little demo of how our product works and give a demo of a, a migration scenario. All right. So in a cloud environment, what, we, what you'll see here is, you know, why is cloud native backup important? What you'll see from obviously everyone's journey into the cloud is that you'll, you'll try to use your legacy data protection tools and you'll see that they're obviously they're agent based, uh, heavy, hardware dependent. You got vendor lock, um, you know, obviously some scripting involved for specific types of applications. Um, and then you're locked into a central IT and ticket based system for support. All right, and that really isn't adhere to anything like the cloud. So what's important to cloud native data protection is that we want to be able to leverage your uh, native OpenStack APIs, software only, vendor agnostic, so you're not locked into anything, um, automated integration, and then really from a cloud perspective, OpenStack perspective, is that we're, we're, we're really focused on self-service management uh, via tenant-driven control. Okay, now, how we can help or how we help uh, the OpenStack journey to come to completion is that, number one, we're agentless. Focus on multi-tenancy, self-service model from by default, scalable as your crowd, cloud grows, we'll glow, grow with it. We're non-disruptive, and we're OpenStack integrated. Number one important thing there, right? But Trilio is actually not just data, data backup and protection; it's it's beyond backup. And what I mean by the, by that is the recovery. Backup is really only half the battle, but when you get into the recovery, that's where that's where we really shine. All right, so from a local backup and recovery, we have file and folder recoveries, virtual machine recoveries, entire tenant workload recoveries, and then also disaster recovery scenarios there. And then on top of that, a couple of use cases here from obviously from an OpenStack perspective, depending on where you are in your journey, tenant to tenant migration, availability zone migration, distribution migration, and version migration. Now, I'll go a little bit deeper into these as we get through a couple of the slides. But Trilio really integrates with everything that, that is OpenStack, meaning we leverage all the native open API uh, services, a Neutron, your Novas, your Cinders, your Glances. We are compatible with all the different distributions. And then from a target repository perspective, again, uh, these are the different types of protocols that we support. Okay, and what really differentiates us from anyone else out there in the marketplace is that the way that we capture the data. We not only capture the data, but the metadata of the full tenant's workload. And what I mean by that is we'll leverage um, your OpenStack native APIs to get the metadata of your VM. So for example, we'll get your networking information from Neutron, your VM information from Nova, your volume configurations from Cinder, and then your uh, glance images from uh, uh, for, for you. glance images from glance, right? And then we we capture everything in an incremental, forever fashion. Okay. So a couple couple things here from a use case perspective, right? So we've we've covered backup and recovery, right? So we have your your local VM recoveries, backup and recoveries. We have our file and folder recoveries. We also have our tenant recoveries within the cloud. Right, and then once we get into the, the kind of fun stuff here is what, we can, what else we can do beyond backup and recovery is the migration perspective, right? Everyone has a different uh, perspective on how they can use the cloud, how their journey has changed throughout, throughout the years, right? And so from a tenant workload perspective, what we can do here is backup from a, from a tenant within a specific cloud and then restore that to a new tenant. So for example, if you have a pre-prod tenant, do your testing there do your backups, and then recover or migrate that to a new tenant within that cloud and call that production. Another idea here is take a backup from tenant one, import or migrate the workloads to a new cloud tenant as well. Another, another use case here is availability zone. Let's say, for example, you're, uh, you have AZ East, AZ West. Um, and AZ East is starting to get a little saturated. You want to start to do some load, load balancing from a VM perspective or a workload perspective. You can pick and choose a couple workloads to say, hey, I'm going to move these over to AZ, from AZ East to AZ West, kind of load balance everything across. 
And then from an upgrade or OpenStack version um, migration, let's say you're on Okada, you've, you've, you're looking to migrate over to a new, new cloud on Queens, same idea, back up everything from a tenant workload perspective, restore that back into uh, a new cloud on Queens. Same idea, distribution, right? So let's say you're on upstream uh, and, and kind of kind of wading the waters there saying, all right, everything looks good, but now I want to I want to jump in jump in the boat with uh, you know one of the main you know distributions here. You can do that that type of uh, migration as well. All right, and then one last thing here is disaster recovery. So let's say you have OpenStack Cloud 1 and 2, um, and 2 is kind of, uh, you, you have that cloud stood up, ready to go. OpenStack 1, OpenStack Cloud 1, you've got Trilio Vault as the backup solution. You do your local, your local backups here. You would replicate the target and then recover into that cloud from there. Okay, so that kind of use cases, backup recovery and use cases there. So um, we are in booth two, C2 right there. Kind of a little hike from here, but um, I'd like to get into a demo from here, show you what it looks like from a OpenStack integration perspective, and then a demo of a tenant migration. All right. All right. So I'll log into this cloud here. All right. All right, and so what you'll see here from a tenant level perspective uh, in our Horizon integration, you'll see that the new tab here that's ex exposed called backups. Within backups, you'll see something called workloads. Now, a workload to Trilio is a logical grouping that answers your four main backup questions. It's what do we want to back up? When do we want to back it up? How often do you want to back it up? And how long do you want to retain the data for? So if we look at one of these uh, workloads here, you'll see Cloud Bronze. All right, and if we look here, you'll see that there's three VMs that are being protected. And then the policy or the protection schema tied to that is, is, is right here. So you have your start date, start time, end date. Your repeat every is your RPO, or how, many, how often do you want to back it up. And then your retention policy can be set in one of two ways. Uh, as you can see here, either the number of snapshots to keep or the number of days to retain a backup. So if we go back in here, we'll take a look at these snapshots here. And as you can see, if we go to the, these are all the, the backups that are available for recoveries. And as you can see here, if you go to the first, it's a full first and then incremental forever fashion backup. So each one of these is a synthetic full backup that is fully mountable, fully accessible, and fully recoverable. And if we look at one of these backups here, what you'll see is not only the data that's being backed up, but the metadata of that VM or the tenant's workload backed up here. So VM 6, 10, and 8, you'll see that there's IPs that are tied to them. We'll get the security groups, the flavor of the VM, any networks that are attached, any volumes that are attached, data volumes, and then the ID of the VM. Now, this type of data is captured at every backup. So for example, if someone adds a new NIC or uh, changes the network type or anything like that, we'll capture that at, at every backup. Okay. Now, I focused a lot on the, the backup side of things, but that's really, again, only half the battle, right? So if we look at different scenarios from a local recovery perspective, um, you know, your worst case scenario is these VMs are gone. Someone has deleted them. So to recover these, you use a one-click restore. Now, this one-click restore will take this specific point in time backup and restore it as of this configuration back to its source location. The other types of uh, the more granular level of recoveries are what we call an in-place restore. And this gives the, the tenant or the user the ability to pick and choose specific volumes out of those VMs to recover. For example, here, if we take VM6 and we say, all right, this VM isn't booting, but we think that we believe the data disk is fine. We take it, we can click here and say, restore just the boot disk. If we go to VM 10, for example, here, we say, all right, the, it, it boots fine, but the data disk is corrupt. Let's, let's restore just that. And if we go to VM 8 here, we can say, all right, this, this guy's fine. Don't touch it. OK, so that's back to the source location. Another granular level of recovery you have here is selective restore. This gives the tenant the ability to use uh, a, a copy of a production VM, for example, in a pre-prod environment or a testing environment for test dev. And what you can do here is change the network mapping of the VM 
to maybe like a private internal network or something like that. Change the volume type mapping. So if the destination has a different type of uh, storage, you can use that. And then again, at a per VM level, let's say for example, we want to test uh, a VM6 is a production VM and you want a copy of it in a different availability zone, we can, we can do that here. We name the VM. You can change the flavor of the VM. Then you can actually stand this VM up in a new availability zone. Again, test dev availability zone, anything like that, test it. Again, VM10, same idea if you want to rename it, get a copy of it, change the availability zone. All right, so it's a really useful tool from a test dev perspective. All right, and then the most granular level of recovery, you know, you're typically, typically you know, the users aren't going to ask for a, a volume level recovery or VM recovery, but they want to just pick a file or a folder that they'd like to recover. So that option, the last option here is called the mount. And what we want to do here is also show you a, a file search. So let's say, for example, VM10, we're looking for uh, someone had modified the Etsy hosts in this application so it's not talking to the other servers, IP was changed, anything like that. What you can do here is search against all the snapshots, a list of maybe the last three snapshots here, or specify a specific date range. And what can, we can do is search against the backup images um, that, we, that we store, uh, and, and the search criteria will show the results. Now, after the search results come back, what you'll see are the, the, three, whoops, the three images from the, the search criteria. And if we expand all, you'll see the search results here. So you can see your modified time, access time, and then the file names from the search. And then from there, they can identify the, the backup where the file is that they want to access, and then go in here and mount that snapshot. Now, I have one mounted already, but the process would look like this. If we go to mount the snapshot, you'll choose what we call a file recovery manager. Now, this is a VM that is a public glance image that we would ship to the cloud admin and make it available to the tenant. So they would spin up this VM and mount our backups to it, kind of acting like a proxy host. So once that's been mounted, what you would do is browse to that file manager VM. And what you'll see here is since we've mounted the entire backup, you'll see all the data that's associated with that backup. And then the user can go in, drill down into the folder or the, to the file that they want to get. So let's see Etsy host, for example. Right? They can download this locally here on their local machine, or they can SSH into this VM and SCP the file over to a target location. Okay. So what I'd like to show you next is a use case example of a tenant level migration within a cloud. Now this, this example can be used from a tenant in one cloud to a tenant in a new cloud as well. All right, so you'll see here that there's two workloads, a demo workload and a summit VM workload. And within those workloads, you'll see some VMs here. All right? And for one of these migrations, there's a couple bits of information that you'll need. So what you'll need to do is identify the tenant ID of what, where you want to migrate your workloads from and where you want to migrate them to. So what you see here is you'll go to the, uh, the projects here, identify the tenant ID of where the, the workload is now and where you want the workloads to be migrated to. And then you'll identify a user that has the right privileges to be able to execute this type of command. This, is typical, this will typically be done by a cloud admin that has access to the Trilio Vault VM or the workload manager here. So what you can do here is list out and, and double check all the workloads that you want to migrate. Okay, and what you'll see here is that the, the IDs, uh, the, the, two v, uh, the two workloads that you want to migrate and then the IDs that are associated with them, the project IDs. And, what, and then what you'll, what you'll do here is specify with a workload reassign command the old tenant ID, which is the current one, and then a new tenant ID that you want to migrate the data to. So we'll see here this command here. So old tenant will be the current tenant. So we'll copy and paste that over here. And then we'll assign it to a new tenant, which again, this can be within the same cloud or a new cloud. So we'll, we'll get the uh, ID of that new cloud here 
or new ID here, paste that in, and then we'll get the uh, user ID that has the right privileges to be able to do this. All right. Now, once this command has been executed, what you'll see from a result is the, the workloads and their, their new project IDs that they're assigned to. Okay, and then we'll log into the cloud as that tenant, or get into that tenant. And we'll see here that from an instance perspective, right, Summit DR is the new tenant. From an instance, there are no instances. There are no volumes. And then we'll go to the backups tab here and see that the workloads are now present in this, in this tenant workspace. And from a recovery perspective, what you'll do is identify a point in time that you want to restore into this new tenant workspace. We'll run a selective restore. We'll name the restore from you know, auditing purposes, what was this done for and why. And this is where we can choose a network mapping on this new cloud or the current cloud to say, all right, I want to bring these VMs up onto this new network. Change the volume type mapping if, if this new cloud has that. And then at a per VM level, we can choose uh, if we want to change the name or anything like that. And then we'll hit restore here. So this will take from, from the, the target repository uh, and restore this back into the new tenant workspace. So once that is completed, as you see here it's executing and then available, what you can go back now and see is that the tenant workspace, if you go to your instances, you'll see that now there are five VMs from that workload have been restored into this new tenant workspace. And then if and then the volumes that are all associated with them as well. And then, again, if you'd like to, you can go in to do the other workload to get the full tenants workloads uh, migrated over. Same type of operation. You do the selective restore. Change the network mapping if you want. Change the volume type mapping. And then again, from a each VM perspective, if you don't want to you know, include one of these VMs, you can uncheck it, exclude it, and then hit the restore button. And these, this, so this will show the last few VMs as well being uh, migrated over. OK, once that's available, we'll double check the instance now that the other three VMs are there. All right, so all eight VMs from that tenant's workspace are now in this new tenant and then the, the volumes that are attached as well. And then if you'd like, from that point forward, if this is you know, going from a pre-prod to a production environment, you can actually enable protection against those VMs again by just going into the workload, editing those, and turning the scheduler back on. And, and that's it. I mean, that's, it's, it's as easy as it looks, and it's uh, even more powerful than it is as well. So appreciate the time. Thank you very much.